making waves in the field using some technology for an innovative new surgery. And these surgeries are saving animals' lives. As reporter Chloe Lesner shows us, he's using a 3D printer to help make a life-saving implant. Perfect, bud. Two weeks after a remarkable surgery. Good job, buddy. Wilson the dog sure gets a perfect no, bill of no health. Regret, but otherwise he should be cured. An outcome they never expected when they found this. And this is the large tumor on the inside of his skull that was compressing his brain. He wouldn't live without surgery. Wilson would need a large part of his skull removed to get the tumor out. Normally, a titanium plate would be put in its place, but what's on the market was too small. My heart kind of sank because I thought, oh, and then he said, well, there's this other option. This is the other option. A 3D printer manned by Dr. Fred Winninger. We created this implant to place perfectly on the skull that we had removed. The first of its kind and a game changer in animal medicine. It's now you have quick turn turnover rates and also accessibility. Usually these plates are thousands if not ten thousands of dollars if they're outsourced and so to be able to make something cost effective for our local clients is very exciting. Wilson's story, one of hope. It's pretty crazy, um, but yeah, we're just really thankful that uh, he's doing so great. A sign other families will be given the gift of more time with their furry friends. <laughs> And that's it for KPRC Channel 2 News at Midday. Thank you for joining us. The News at Noon starts right now. Live from KPRC, this is Channel 2 News at Noon. Breaking news from South Texas. A massive flame shutting down a busy interstate. Ahead, what was burning and what's happening now? Plus, back on American soil, Americans who were stuck on a cruise ship for weeks over coronavirus concerns return to the U.S., but they're not going home just yet. Plus, the Houston Astros back on the diamond. Ahead, we hear from two of the team's best as they have their first full team workout in spring training. But we begin with breaking news out of Corpus Christi. That's where firefighters had their hands full with a gas line fire this morning. The rupture sent massive flames into the air. That fire finally put out just before 10 o'clock. Part of the busy Interstate 37 was shut down because of the fire. Thankfully, there are no reports of any injuries. Also breaking another gas leak, this one in Sta Stafford. Fire officials have given the all clear there. This is in the area of Stafford Pride and Con Constitution Avenue. We're told construction contractor hit a gas line around 8. A shelter in place was issued as a precaution, but it's since been lifted. Center Point did come out to repair the line. No one was hurt. Developing now the trial for chemical plant Arkema and three of its employees begins this week. This is all over fires at the company's Crosby plant, and they're accused of air pollution during Hurricane Harvey. Channel 2's Vincent, Vincent Crivelli in downtown Houston with a look at what happened today in court. Yeah, good afternoon. Today, the defense and prosecution are wrapping up pretrial motions. Jury selection begins tomorrow, and on Wednesday, opening arguments are expected to start. During the chaos of Hurricane Harvey, the Arkema plant in Crosby caught fire. Dozens of deputies and firefighters were there for days, helping people, keeping the situation under control while dangerous chemicals burned. Two deputies had to go to the hospital. In August 2018, Arkema CEO Richard Rowe and a plant manager were indicted for recklessly releasing toxic chemicals into the air during Hurricane Harvey. The DA's office says Rowe lied about how dangerous the situation was. The toxic cloud put the Crosby community and first responders at risk, according to the DA's office. The vice president of logistics, Mike Keough, was charged with felony assault. The DA says his actions put the community in harm's way. Now, nearly three years later, the trio will head to trial. And if convicted, the plant manager and CEO could face up to five years behind bars and the company would be fined $1 million. Reporting from the Harris County Courthouse, Vincent Crivelli, KPRC, Channel 2 News. After a beautiful Saturday, we have now had two days of foggy mornings and overcast skies. Channel 2 meteorologist Eric Brait here with when we'll possibly see the sun again. Well, we will see the sun again. That's that's a piece of good news, right? It just may be a little while. It's going to be a couple more days at least before we start to see some brighter skies. Houston Zoo right now, not a lot of people hanging out at the zoo. Not the perfect day to be at the zoo, but hey, at least it's warm, right? 75 degrees, 76 percent humidity and a south breeze at 15. Southwest side of Houston, we're looking at 76 degrees, a south breeze, humid conditions there too. In fact, all throughout southeast Texas, temperatures are warm and it is muggy. So that's the story for 
the remainder of the afternoon. That south wind flow continuing to pump in a lot of moisture from the Gulf of Mexico. Visibility getting better slowly, but surely still kind of foggy in Galveston on the island. Uh, dense fog advisory has ended, though. That ended right here at the top of the hour. Temperatures today staying in the 70s, mid to upper 70s. We've got maybe a slight chance for a sprinkle just by virtue of the fact that we've got so much humidity in the atmosphere. But the clouds stay pretty thick during the day today. You can see not much happening as far as radar goes, so I wouldn't anticipate you really needed, needing your umbrellas necessarily today. But heading into the midweek period, that's a different story. We will time out the rain, plus let you know when that sunshine does return. It's all coming up in the full forecast in just a few minutes. Stay with us. Eric, thank you. Now to the latest in the coronavirus crisis. Hundreds of Americans are back on U.S. soil today, nearly a month after boarding the now quarantined Diamond Princess cruise ship. Those flights were supposed to be free of the coronavirus, but 14 people tested positive. The cruise line, rather, was supposed to be free of the virus. And now those 14 people, along with the rest of the passengers, will remain in quarantine. NBC Sarah Harmon is at Travis Air Force Base in California with the very latest. This morning, hundreds of Americans who were quarantined on the Diamond Princess cruise ship are back on U.S. soil. Two chartered flights from Japan touching down overnight at Air Force bases in Texas and California. The flights were not supposed to include any passengers affected by the coronavirus. But the State Department has now revealed 14 people who tested positive were allowed to travel. They spent the more than 12-hour flight in isolation chambers seen here, filmed by passenger Cheryl Molesky. After nearly two weeks in quarantine, she and her husband decided it was time for their extended vacation to come to an end. Honestly, you're much safer getting off this ship. The Molesky's were evacuated by American teams in hazmat suits. The bus will take you to the airplane, the airplane takes you to the United States, and then you get the passport. Well, we're exhausted, but we're on the plane. NBC's Janice Mackie Freyer is in Yokohama, Japan. There are still some Americans on the ship who chose to not get on that flight. They're among some 3,000 passenger and crew who will remain under quarantine until Wednesday. And only when they test negative for the virus will they be allowed off the ship. Among the Americans who chose to stay on board, Matthew Smith. The U.S. offer was uh, break this quarantine early get into a bus with a bunch of other people who we don't know how they've been doing the quarantine. Now, what happens next depends on whether or not you have coronavirus. The passengers who are infected will be treated at a hospital. Everyone else is now subject to a mandatory 14-day quarantine with regular health checks. And keep in mind, it's been almost a month since these folks initially set sail on their cruise home is still a long way away. Back to you guys. More than 780 million people across China are still living under various forms of travel restrictions as authorities try to contain the coronavirus. That virus has infected more than 70,000 people and claimed the lives of 1,700 people in mainland China. On click2houston.com, we have information on other countries now planning similar humanitarian flights out of China. Today, friends and family will come together for a memorial service to remember a Sugarland mother and son killed inside their home. Police say Richard Logan shot and killed his wife, Diana, and their son, Aaron, before driving to San Marcos, where he physically assaulted his daughter and then committed suicide. The service for the Logan family will be held at 2 o'clock at the River Point Church. Now to the future of space. SpaceX has successfully launched another round of satellites into orbit. SpaceX propelling 60 Starlink satellites to orbit this morning from Cape Canaveral, Florida. This is the fifth Starlink mission for SpaceX. SpaceX hopes its satellites will provide reliable and affordable internet around the world. Well, from space now to the Astros, who started today their first full day of workouts in West Palm Beach, Florida. Sports director Randy McAvoy is there, and he caught up with two of the Astros' best hitters about the new season. Hello from Astros Spring Training here in West Palm Beach, Florida. A different vibe here today. It's the first full squad workout after pitchers and catchers had put in their workouts for the first four days of spring training. So you see some of the video, the guys excited to be out here. Many have actually been in town and popped in and out of the facility a few times over the last several days. But this is the first full squad official workout on the field. So you're talking about batting practice on some of the backfields here today. Also infield practice, agility drills. The typical stuff you see during the course of spring training. Now, this morning, uh, Carlos Correa and Alex Bregman met with the media inside the clubhouse. Correa, we begin with him. He made it clear he's ready to turn the page and get ready for this new season. 
We're very close here in this clubhouse, as you, as you guys know. Um, you guys know it's not a story, it's, it's real. And, uh, you know, we're on the same page, man. Uh, we talk, we text, and uh, we're ready to get rolling. This is 2020. Uh, it's going to be a great year. I've seen a lot of people show up early, uh, working hard, um, talk to a lot of people about their off seasons and how they've gone. Um, it's, been, uh, it's been good to see everybody's face again. The Astros will work out all week together, and believe it or not, games begin starting on Saturday night right here at the Complex. Astros will take on the Nationals. And one other note, one player not in camp yet is pitcher Zach Greinke. We reported that a couple of days ago. He's scheduled to arrive on February 22nd. With the Astros in West Palm Beach at spring training, Randy McAvoy, KPRC Channel 2 Sports. And Randy will have more reaction from the players and coaches this afternoon starting at 4. You can catch his reports on air and online at click2houston.com. More trouble for the Houston Astros from the sign-stealing scandal. A season ticket holder has filed a lawsuit in Harris County against the ball club. Adam Wallach accusing the Astros of overcharging fans for season tickets during the sign-stealing scheme. That suit filed by Beaumont attorneys Michael Toops and Richard Kaufman seeking a class action status for Astros full and partial season ticket holders from 2017 through 2020. They're also asking for damages. An Astros spokesperson has not yet commented on the suit. Coming up, NASA's Mars rover is scheduled to land on the red planet tomorrow, and it's getting a name just in time. Plus, Nevada, the next contest for the Democrats, and the stage is set next. Five candidates have qualified for Wednesday's debate, but there could be one more on the stage. That's all next on Channel 2 News at noon. We need... You're watching Channel 2, Houston's home for news. Now to Decision 2020, where this Wednesday is the NBC News Democratic debate. It's a major platform for the candidates to distance themselves from the competition, and it is the last debate before Saturday's Nevada caucuses. NBC's Tracy Potts shows us how this debate could feature one candidate in his first debate. Most of Nevada's 48 delegates will be decided in Saturday's caucuses. Early voting is underway. This week, this is going to be a bar barn burn. Pete Buttigieg with the delegate lead after New Hampshire slamming conservative critics of gay marriage. I'm proud of my husband, and I'm not going to be lectured on family values from the likes of Rush Limbaugh or anybody who supports Donald J. Trump. Health care is huge here. Buttigieg siding with union workers who want to keep their private plans, while saying Senator Elizabeth Warren explains how to pay for Medicare for all. And we can go after the tax cheats at the top end. Senator Bernie Sanders is under fire for supporters threatening union workers who don't like his plan. If any of my supporters did that, I'd disown them. Flat disown them. Find out who the hell they are. If any of them work for me. Fire him. Find out. All four joined Senator Amy Klobuchar at Wednesday's debate, many of them ganging up on billionaire Michael Bloomberg's record with women and minorities. I am on your show right now, Margaret, answering these tough questions. Where is he? He just keeps running a bunch of ads. Spending hundreds of millions of dollars trying to buy an election. Bloomberg tweeting, I will always be a champion for women in the workplace. Bloomberg has until tomorrow to qualify for that debate. Tracy Potts, NBC News, Washington. Here in Texas, early voting starts tomorrow for several statewide races and legislative seats. Voters can cast ballots at any polling location in the county. You can head to our website for a link to find those polling locations. Early voting ends February 28th. Election day is March 3rd. Also happening tomorrow, jurors begin deliberating the fate of Harvey Weinstein and his sexual assault trial. The disgraced movie producer is charged with five counts, including rape, sexual criminal act, and predatory sexual assault. If convicted, he could spend the rest of his life in prison. Also tomorrow, NASA is scheduled to name its Mars rover exactly one year ahead of its planned landing on the Red Planet. The moniker will be chosen from a student essay contest with the winner invited to see the spacecraft launch in July from Cape Canaveral. Look out on camera, the power of Mother Nature, a fire department capturing a moment that a vacant house plunged into the Tennessee River. You can see sparks flying when that home finally starts falling. Another nearby home also in danger of sliding into the river, but firefighters were able to evacuate those homes about an hour beforehand. Thankfully, no one was hurt, and they are really uh, getting pounded by heavy rains, and now this 
you know, possibly historic flooding in that area. Yeah, and unfortunately, we know all too well mm -hmm. what they're going through. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so our hearts go out to them, certainly. Uh, no flooding in our forecast this week, which is always good news. We don't have a lot of sunshine, though, either, and there is a fair amount of rain to speak of. So let's get you ready for the rest of your Monday and for the rest of your week coming up, shall we? We're going to have to find our inner sunshine. It is a little on the gray side out there. Not the prettiest of days, but hey, you know what? People are making the best of it and really enjoying the Houston Zoo. It should be a nice day for it. It's warm. Temperature 69 degrees in the southeast side of town. South breezes 11 miles per hour. Uh, downtown looking a little murky, kind of a haze in the air. Kaplan Sinus Relief camera showing that. 74 degrees downtown and we're looking at 60s to low to mid 70s throughout southeast Texas. 76 degrees in Sugarland, 77 El Campo. Some of the warmer readings and we shouldn't top out much above 78 degrees. So we're not going to warm up too much more, although we're already well above where we should be for this time of year. We've got a warm start to the day. We've got a warm finish, partly because we've got a south wind. That south wind always brings in gulf moisture. That's what we've got today. That's why we've got the low hanging clouds. It feels a little claustrophobic out there because those clouds do hang very low in the sky. Half mile visibility in Galveston, everywhere else at or above one mile. So we are improving as far as visibility goes, and we're starting to see a couple of little spots of green on our cloud and radar composite. Not ruling out a sprinkle or two this afternoon, but number one, if we see anything, it's going to be fairly light and it will be rather isolated too. So not a lot of rain today. We'll keep about a 20% chance in there. What we do know is we're going to stay cloudy. We are going to stay warm. So you won't need a jacket today. If you forget the umbrella when you leave your house, don't worry too much because I don't think you're necessarily going to need it today. But increasing chances for rain mean that you will need it going forward. Notice what happens as we head into Tuesday. We start the day in the upper 60s near 70 degrees again. So you will probably wake up to a good bank of fog here in southeast Texas again tomorrow. And by tomorrow afternoon, we start to see a better chance for rain, especially in our northern counties. That's because a cold front's going to come in from the north. Right now it's draped over Oklahoma and the Texas Panhandle, but it will slide into southeast Texas tomorrow. And this is going to be the focal point for showers not only tomorrow, but into Wednesday and Thursday because this front's going to park itself right near the coast. So we're going to have rain in the forecast. It's not going to be a pretty picture through midweek. Uh, we will have cold air to the north and we'll, we will, I think, be in the warmer air through about Wednesday. And then the cold air kind of takes over as this front eventually does sneak out of here into the Gulf of Mexico. So a cool finish to the work week, but a slight warm up as we head into the weekend. High pressure working its way off to the east. So we'll see somewhat of a return flow. 60s, I think, for your high temperatures this weekend. As as far as rainfall goes, like I said, no flooding. We've got temperature, we've got rainfall anywhere from about an inch to about three inches. That's for the entire week coming up. And your forecast today, temperatures warm for this time of year. We should be in the 60s. We are in the 70s today. Uh, we'll stay in the 70s tomorrow, 60s on Wednesday, and then that cool air takes over Thursday and Friday before we see a modest warm up this weekend. But sunshine heading into the weekend. That's we always love something to see good. The sun. To, yeah, so that's a good thing I to like see. I like finding your inner sunshine. Absolutely. Thanks, Eric. Well, coming up, there is good news for all you wine lovers out there. Why the price of your favorite bottle is coming down, plus changes coming to the way your credit score is calculated. Next, what you can do to get that number up. Prove this message. Breaking news that could impact where you shop. Pier 1 just announced it has begun Chapter 11 bankruptcy proceedings in Virginia. The home furnishings chain reportedly looking to sell the company. Officials say it plans to use this process to complete the previously announced closure of up to 450 store locations. Pier 1's online store is still open. What well, is the number many of us do not keep track of, but it's got a big impact on everything we do. Now, big changes have been made that could impact whether you can get a loan to buy a house, a car, or another big ticket item. This morning, NBC's Chris Clackham shows us how credit scores are now going to be calculated. Suffice it to say, your FICO credit score is one of the most important numbers in your financial life. This is used in about 90% of lending decisions. It's going to determine whether or not you get that loan or line of credit in the first place, and if you do, the interest rate you'll pay. But now, the way your FICO score is determined has changed to what they call trended data. An example, if it's just one month out of 12 where your spending is well above normal. Could be a vacation, could be holiday shopping, back to school shopping. Then it's not going to hurt your credit rating. 
but fall behind paying your bills three or four months in a row, get ready to pay more. Your debt's creeping up, you're starting to fall behind on your bills. Trended data is going to penalize somebody like that. And according to creditcard.com's Ted Rossman, you'll pay a lot more. I mean, even on a $200,000 mortgage, we could be talking a difference of $25,000 over 30 years. He says the best way to avoid a hit from the changes, pay your bills on time. Chris Clackham, NBC News. Sprint and T-Mobile are one step closer to merging after the New York Attorney General says she will not appeal a losing effort to stop the deal. New York and a dozen other states sued to stop the $26 billion merger. They say it would hurt consumers by reducing competition. But a U.S. District Court judge disagreed. California's Attorney General says they are still considering their options. Well, good news for wine lovers. The price of wine expected to fall dramatically. That price is going to hit its lowest levels in five years thanks to a surplus in California grapes. That combined with the decreased demand for wine, the cheaper prices may last up to three years. So drink up and buy up. Well, big changes coming to General Motors as the car giant looks to become more profitable. GM doing away with the iconic Holden brand, which has existed in Australia for more than 160 years. GM also pulling out of Australia, New Zealand by next year. The car giant also deciding to stop selling Chevrolet vehicles in Thailand by the end of this year. A live look for you now out over the Southwest Freeway. Ahead, uh, we've got Eric Braden with another look at the forecast. And he's going to tell you when you're going to see the sun again. Plus, it's not every day you see a horse on a plane, let alone in first class. Next, how this little guy performed on his very first flight. Well, you have heard of dogs on a plane, snakes on a plane. Now, you can add miniature horse to the list. Take a look. This is Fred, the mini service horse. His handler says this is his very first trip on a plane. They flew from Michigan to California. That's a long trip. And she even bought two first class seats so that Fred could be more comfortable. Other than the stairs, she says the trip was very successful. I think I could use a little service mini That's horse. That's so cute. Aww. I kind of want one now. <laughs> I know. And look, he does look comfortable, doesn't he? Aw, that's really sweet. It is. Very cool. Takes all kinds. Yes, it does. Yes, it does. Uh, well, I'm glad it did work out. Our weather today is, eh, well, working out for people who like warm weather, right? <laughs> it is not the prettiest of days. Uh, I wish it could be a little brighter, but it's not. Mostly cloudy skies today. Temperatures are going to stay in the 70s. And as far as rain chances go, at best, I think a sprinkle spritz here or there. Uh, just warm. We do have increasing rain chances as we head through the middle port portion of the week but sunshine see on as we head into the weekend i think everybody can appreciate that thank you eric and thank you